John Murta has finally stepped down from his role as director of football at Manchester United and Murta has been actually at the club for 10 years. Wow, what a 10 years that's been, eh? What an absolute pantheon of success he's overseen. Um, he is a product of the Glazer ownership at Manchester United. There's been an expectation for a while that Mercer was about to step down or be moved on, uh, especially with the rumours of some big backroom staff names rumoured to be joining Manchester United in his place. And he'd only been in the director of football role for a few years um, after coming from an academy administration role where he was also relatively underwhelming. The Ineos restructuring of Manchester United is about to kick into gear. Now, Murta joined in 2013, having previously worked um, in the Premier League for Everton and Fulham. And he started off um, with United, focusing on the academy and development before taking uh, an official leap to the head of football recruitment in 2016. He was then promoted and made Manchester United's first ever director of football five years later. Murta's biggest accolade, if you can call it that, is... Um, bringing Eric Ten Hag to the club, being a huge advocate for him uh, due to the nature of his two separate Ajax rebuilds. And since then, Murta has been a crucial contributor in building United squad um, and the backroom staff around him. And his choice of backroom staff included the director of football negotiations, um, in Matt Hargreaves, Director of Football Operations in David Harrison, and Deputy Football Director Andy O'Boyle. And his time at United has not necessarily been all bad, though. Uh, I think he deserves some plaudits, probably. Depends where you apportion the, the credit and the blame for all of this sort of stuff, but um, there has been some work and some praise in developing United's academy, as well as the women's teams. The contribution of John Murtagh uh, and Academy Director Nick Cox has been a fruitful one for United um, in nurturing some homegrown talent. Now, like I said, I don't know exactly where the, the credit for all of that lies. United have had a very strong academy system for a number of years, and there's been a number of overhauls um, in recent years that a lot of people have both agreed and disagreed with. So, again, I don't know enough to be able to say he definitely did this and he definitely didn't do that. I guess there's been a, a few different chefs in the kitchen with this one. Right, lads, gather around. You have heard me banging on about Manscaped for ages, uh, mainly discussing the virtues of a well-trimmed ball bag. But today we're going to move a little bit north and something that you might have actually seen, my beard. Manscaped isn't just a master of below-the-belt grooming. They have conquered beard territory too. And I know this is groundbreaking news. Let's delve into the details. Now, we are all well acquainted with Manscaped's brilliance for the downstairs department. They've been many a saviour of many a date night and many a ball bag. And you know the lawnmower 4.0 by now. I'm not going to tell you about any of the features for it because if you don't know them, then you're never going to know them, right? It's a certified hero for the never regions. But they're here for the beards now as well. And they've got the beard hedger. It is a cordless miracle worker that is both tough and gentle. It takes down facial forests in a single stroke. It's got 20 different lengths of settings. It gives you the power to totally customize your beard without cluttering up the bathroom and having a million different attachments. Now, they've also got another member of the band and it's the Handyman. That is a dual-sided foil razor that has got your back, whether it's your face, whether you're going clean shaven or just tidying up a little bit around the neck. It is the epitome of comfort in the shaving world and it's got a seamless and nick free experience so listen if you want to give your beard the vip treatment that it absolutely deserves get over to manscape.com use a special code housen you're going to get 20 percent off and free shipping and while you're grooming the jewels let's not neglect the crown with manscaped who said beauty had to be a pain let's keep it neat and tidy top to bottom now murta has had his fingerprints on a lot of stuff uh, and a lot of it has been some successful um, but the squad almost looks identical to the one that he found when he got here. There is a lot of work to do. We are terrible in the transfer market. We are at the behest of FFP because we buy high and sell low, literally the opposite of the, the thing that you're supposed to try and do. 
the academy and the we women's team both require more investment. They play at Lee Sports Village, which is an embarrassment. The facilities need a redevelopment to keep up with the very best in the world. The stadium needs a fucking baby wiper catcher and about 400 million spending on it or a complete rebuild. That's not necessarily his fault, but those things require doing. There is so much more needs to be done. And that's before you even get into the fact that Manchester United whilst we have seen the the cost of Manchester United's wages fall for the amount of money that has been spent on this football team we are so far away from anything like value for money in what we get now there's been an unwavering amount of speculation uh, as to what comes next post John Murta leaving United the supposedly other people gone at the same time as well and I don't think it's as simple as just plucking replacements out of thin air. I think the candidate for this job has to be someone with pedigree, experience, contacts, someone that's going to bring us success on the back of something that they've proven elsewhere. Now, I, I say this line all the time, but it feels like this is what United's internal recruitment structure looked like. It was, we need a director of football. Who's out there by the photocopier? You're the new director of football, off your pop. None of the best in class that we seem to have looked like we're trying to get, at least, since Ineos have walked through the door. Now, reportedly, Dan Ashworth has been the man that's going to be touted to fill the role left by Murta. Um, Omar Barada and Jason Wilcox are the other two names that appear to be taking some responsibilities and other roles within the club. Darren Fletcher, it appears, is going to remain at the club with the role of technical director being moulded into probably something else. And long story short, Murta leaving, I don't think is a bad thing. The men coming in are going to be some real heavy hitters in the world of football, however you look at it. Now, there are going to be some big decisions made this summer. Some huge decisions have already been made. And the toughest ones might yet to become, with Eric Ten Hag's job probably being one of the main things Ineos will have to consider. What will they do? Will they pause on making a decision and allow him to see out the final 12 months of his contract? Will they pause and at the same time be trying to replace him? Will they pause and give him the opportunity to win an extension to his contract? Or will they walk through the door tell everyone everything's going to be all right and fire the guy as soon as the final whistle goes on the final game of the season. Honestly, none of us know at this stage, and I think all of those things are fully on the table and possibilities. The rebuild of Manchester United seems like it's going to be a very, very long road. And I'm almost okay with that in the sense that long means well thought out, and long means planned, and long means sustainable, achievable targets that are constantly improving rather than like a big flash in the pan, throw loads of money around, completely bollocks it up and have to do it all again in 12 months. No one knows. There's going to be a lot of gambles, but at least we're looking for the right people in the right areas. I think that's a great place for us to start. I don't think it's going to be easy, and I don't think we'll be sitting here talking about a title challenge in 12 months' time. But we have to get closer. We have to start acting like a serious football club again. Because actually, we're not that far away, considering the absolute fucking comedy club that we have been for the last 10 years. We're still in and around the mixer. And two or three players could have us really start to put a challenge together. They've got to be the right ones, though. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Is it good riddance for John Murta? Or do you actually think uh, he's a misunderstood and undervalued member of staff? Let me know in the comments. Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around these parts, then don't forget to subscribe. My channel is proudly supported by my community on Patreon. If you'd like to get a little bit of extra content, a Discord group, meetups, five-a-side games, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes, and even an occasional bit of transfer news as and when I get it, 
then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here. You'll also find all of my socials here too if you want to follow me on any of those platforms. Nice one.